Today I'm going to show you how to check the output power of an amplifier, and all you're going to need for this is a multimeter, a resistor, we'll get into what kind of resistor in a second, uh, some way to plug your uh, computer or phone into your amplifier, and then some way of connecting the, uh, the multimeter to the output on your amp. I'm just using alligator clips. So, the kind of resistor that I'm using here, you need to have a resistor that matches the output impedance of the amplifier and is also rated for enough power for the amplifier. So I have a pair that um, I got from Radio Shack when they were closing. Nothing special about them. They're rated for 20 watts each, so combined in parallel, or, or in series for that matter, they um, are good for 40 watts. And uh, these are each 8 ohms, so wired together in parallel like this. Uh, it becomes 4 ohms, and that's because this amp here is 4 ohms, so this is kind of making a dummy load for the speaker. So why don't we just use the speaker instead of getting a resistor? Well, you can do that if you're trying to get a really rough figure, but it's not going to be very accurate. Reason being that the, um, the speaker, when it moves back and forth, it induces voltage back in the, in the signal, which the multimeter is going to pick up, and it's going to show uh, not all that accurate. So if you want a good figure, just get resistors. They're not very expensive. You can probably get one um, for maybe a buck or two a piece online. Um, just make sure, you know, if your amp is 4 ohms, get a 4 ohm resistor. If it's 8 ohms, get an 8 ohm resistor. 16 ohms, get a 16 ohm resistor. So for this next step, the ideal thing to do would be to have an oscilloscope, but since I don't have one, and I think a lot of people watching this don't have one, I'm just going to do it by ear, which won't be perfect, but it'll be good enough. With the amp still connected to the built-in speaker, or the cab, whatever, you're, something with a speaker on there, um, just connect it up to your phone or computer or whatever, and put it in there. Uh, turn up the, the master volume all the way, uh, as long, uh, along with the bass and treble. And then play some, you're going to want to play some sort of a, a tone through there. Um, I'm using 300 hertz, and the reason I'm using that figure is because well, the lowest fundamental of a guitar is what, something like 82, 84 hertz, um, but that doesn't get picked up very much, so a couple times that, if you have a very trebly amp, you might want to pick something higher, something very bright. Uh, but for this amp, I think it's um, 300 hertz, and I'm just looking on YouTube. I searched 300 hertz tone, and uh, I found a video pretty quickly. And what you're going to want to do when you turn it on is, uh, is just slowly bring up the volume until you can start to hear clipping. Now, clipping is very different from a small amount of, of hair, a little bit of distortion on there. Uh, there. There becomes a point where it very suddenly goes from somewhat or mostly clean to very not clean. Uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to pick up on the camera. I'm going to show it here. Um, but for lack of a better word, the amp starts sounding angry. Uh, keep in mind we're on the clean channel here, and I am going to start this off right here, and we'll see how well it comes through. Not sure how well you, there's, also a, there's also a buzz in this room. Not sure how well you, well you can hear it on the camera, but there is a point right about... which is about as loud as I can get it without it um, going into the hard clipping right there. So that's what you want to do. Find as best as you can the point where it's as loud as it'll go before it starts noticeably hard clipping. Then I'm going to turn the amp off. It's important to turn the amp off now. And now at this point, I'm going to unplug the built-in speaker, and I'm going to replace it with my resistor pack. And what I'm doing here is I'm just unplugging the speaker from there and plugging in a speaker cable. Then I take the speaker cable, connect it up to some alligator clips, and connect it to the two ends of my resistor. A good idea before you have it connected is to actually check and make sure your, your uh, resistance is correct here. So like I said, this is a 4 ohm amp, and I have a 4 ohm resistor right here. You have to do that without the alligator clips connected because the resistance of the, the transformer will, will throw your value off. So now I have this connected. And now I'm going to switch over to voltage, and a range that's good for this is probably, I'm going to use the 200 range, but if you have an auto range setting, you're even better there. And then just put these in here, so you're measuring the voltage. Make sure your voltage is in AC, that's important, because you're not, there's no, uh, there shouldn't be any, anyway, DC voltage coming out of here. Okay, and once you have that all hooked up there with your multimeter plugged into there, I uh, have the amp turned on and allowed the tubes to warm up for a second there, and now I'm going to play it again. Remember, I didn't touch any of the, the knobs, so I should have the volume knob exactly in the same spot it was, so that we're still measuring from right before the clipping point. And now I play this in here. I believe this uh, sound fades in. And once it comes in, your um, 
you should get a, a pretty stable voltage somewhere. And once it stabilizes out, that's the, the volts that are coming out of your amp. But how do you convert that into output power? So, based on the power formula, power equals current times volts. And based on Ohm's law, we know that our current is the voltage divided by the resistance. So, all we need to do, essentially, you combine the two formulas, and you get that the voltage that you got on your multimeter squared divided by the resistance, the impedance, uh, of your resistor pack or your speaker should be the amount of power that's coming out of your amp. So for this one, 10.5 times 10.5, because again that's our voltage times voltage, or voltage squared, and then take that number and divide it by the impedance, which in this case is 4. And we get 27.56 watts. So, one thing you may want to try is turning the volume all the way up. And if I do that, wow, it goes all the way to 12.3, which is the equivalent of 37.8 watts. Now, it's not actually putting out that much power. And the reason for that is because this multimeter, like most multimeters on a reasonable budget, is not true RMS. So it's not actually measuring the amount of current that's going through it exactly. Uh, if you have a good sine wave before, this is the reason we've been trying to figure out where the clipping point is. Because before clipping, these multimeters are pretty accurate at determining the voltage. But once you start having something that's very distorted, they're not very accurate anymore. So, the honest truth is this amp is probably putting out slightly more than the 27 and change watts that have been showing on there. Um, but it's difficult to measure that accurately. And that's true of most amps. Most amplifiers, like say you have an amp that's rated for 50 watts, it might actually be putting out a little bit more than that when you turn it up all the way. It's rated at the point where it starts to go into hard clipping mode. So this is the same measurement that most people are going to use. Now another interesting thing on here is that if you try different tones, you might get different results. Like for example right here, I'm going to turn the bass knob down all the way. And you see the, vol the, uh, the power really drop off there. And if I were using a higher frequency, you probably wouldn't see that much of a drop off. Conversely, at this frequency, if I drop the treble, I don't actually get that much. The treble now is all the way off, and I didn't lose that much power. Whereas if you had chosen, you know, say like 3,000 hertz or something, you might find no drop when you drop the bass like this, and a lot of drop when you drop the treble. So it's interesting, you may want to try a couple different frequencies and see how much power your amp produces at various different frequencies. So there you have it. That's how you can pretty accurately, reasonably accurately anyway, calculate um, the output power of an amplifier using just basic things that a lot of people have around. And now I know that I have a 27.5 watt amplifier. Thanks for watching.